In part one, we discussed what we know about Ashara Dane. This video lets talk about the two major theories fans have concerning Ashara and Brandon Stark. Full disclosure, these are not my theories, but simply some heavily believed fan speculations. One of the major theories held by fans about Ashara and the Starks is that Ashara and Brandon Stark were lovers. There's some compelling evidence for this, and then of course some wild speculation. Barristan believes someone dishonored her at Harrenhal, and he notes that she looked to a Stark. We're never told which Stark that is, though, and how accurate the dishonoring part is. Barristan is pretty much the only one that says this, and he might have a skewed version of dishonoring her. Even if Ashara willingly slept with a man at Harrenhal, Barristan might still have considered that man dishonoring her for sleeping with her instead of waiting to marry her. Brandon is looked to as the man that dishonored her, or at least slept with her, for several reasons. First, people look at Ned and Barristan's relationship. If Ned had been that stark, Barristan would probably not talk about Ned and act around him in the manner we've seen. Barristan has a lot of respect for Ned and even defends him. Barristan might be a bit more angry with the man he thought dishonored Ashara, the woman he's still in love with and led to her death. Another reason people think Brandon was Ashara's lover is that Ashara wouldn't be the first woman Brandon had dishonored in that way. He had already taken Lady Barbara Riswell's, later known as Lady Dustin's, virginity. Lady Dustin states Brandon was never shy about what he wanted, and thought a bloody sword was a beautiful thing. Lady Dustin thought that Brandon was in love with her, but that might be her interpretation, and Brandon could have told her what she wanted to hear while he was busy sowing his wild oats. George R. R. Martin has been very open about Brandon's promiscuous behavior. When asked if Brandon had any children, he said, It'd be an exaggeration to say that Brandon died before he could have children. It's established in the book that he was no virgin. He could very well have left behind some little snows in various places he visited. But what's absolutely clear is that he had no legitimate children. This leads fans to wonder how much Brandon got around. Lastly, there's also the fact that Ned had additional space in his tent at Harrenhal for Reed because Brandon may have been in someone else's bed. So if Brandon wanted Ashara, one of the most beautiful ladies in the kingdom, he probably went for it. Let's assume she went for Brandon as well, and the two became lovers. While she could have gotten pregnant at the tourney at Harrenhal, others suggest a later date. That they remained sleeping together, but she didn't get pregnant until Rhaegar stole Lyanna and Brandon marched to King's Landing to demand for his sister back. Brandon was then imprisoned, and his father summoned. While in prison, who would visit him? Why Ashara Dane, the lady-in-waiting for Ilya Martell, who is also at King's Landing. She visits her lover in prison, they have some really weird prison sex, and she gets pregnant. From here, this theory just gets really depressing. Ashara is happy, she has her lover, and she gets pregnant, which she might not know yet or figures out soon. Then Rickard Stark arrives at King's Landing, Ares II goes full-blown crazy, and then Ashara's lover, Brandon, strangles himself to death while trying to save his father from being burned alive. Alright, that's pretty bad. You found out you're pregnant, or you do shortly after. And your lover was just killed by the father-in-law of the woman you work for. So, she returns to Dorne when she finds out she's pregnant, knowing her child will never know its father. There also might be fear that the psycho Ares II will want her baby dead if he figures out it's Brandon Starks. So she's in Dorne, and then things just keep getting worse for poor Ashara. Her brother Arthur guards her dead lover's sister, Liana, whose abduction led to her lover's death. Things are getting more and more complicated, but there still might be a happy ending. Nope. This leads to her lover's brother, Ned, killing her brother Arthur. Which would be bad enough, but then some fans like to twist that knife in there a little bit more and wonder, how did Ned find the Tower of Joy? What if Ashara told Ned where he could find Lyanna? Her brother could have told her, or she could have learned some other way, such as through Willa heading to the tower, or through being Ilya's handmaiden and hearing of Rhaegar's plans. Feeling a sense of guilt, or maybe out of love for her dead lover, she tells Ned where to find the Tower of Joy. Heck, she may have believed that Lyanna was being held and raped and just wanted to rescue her. She watched Brandon and his father die from one mad Targaryen. What if she could stop another terrible fate from befalling or continuing against another Stark by the Mad King's son? So Ned goes to the tower as Ashara instructed, and it results in Ashara's brother's death. 
When Ned comes back with her brother's sword, the grief of losing the father of her child and her brother causes her to go into labor, and her kid is stillborn. Or she lost a child before then, and her brother dying was just the last straw. Overcome with sadness, she jumps from a tower. And even if you want to take away all of that other stuff and just say, Ashara and Brandon slept together and were in love. Brandon died. Later, her brother died. It was too much, and she killed herself. That wouldn't be a stretch. You don't have to add in all these other pregnancy things or visits in the dungeon. Just losing a sibling can be one of the hardest things you will ever experience in your life. Add on to that, maybe losing a lover, and her jumping doesn't seem that much of a stretch. Some opponents of this theory believe that since Brandon knew Ned liked Ashara, it would be a dick move, their words not mine, for Brandon to then sleep with her after he got her to dance with his brother. Brandon, from all evidence, such as how he stormed King's Landing for his sister, appeared very protective of his family. But wanting to dance with a girl doesn't mean you're in love with her, and Brandon did have some wild wolf blood. There's also a huge counter to the whole it had to be Brandon, otherwise Barristan wouldn't like Ned. First, there's debate if a Stark and the man that dishonored her are separate in Barristan's mind. They don't have to be connected. She could have had eyes for a Stark, as Barristan noted, and been dishonored by another. Then there's some that believe Barristan is regretful that it wasn't him with her, and even if it was Ned, wouldn't begrudge him anything. He just wished she had looked to him instead of a Stark. In Barristan's head, he may have been better suited to protect her and take care of her. He also believes Robert's rebellion could have been avoided if he had unhorsed Rhaegar and crowned Ashara, so who knows how deep that kind of thinking goes with that guy. He seems to take a lot of responsibility on his own shoulders. Lastly, this theory, like most, speculates a lot as well, which is why there's a lot of people that go against it. There's another theory that involves Brandon and Ashara being lovers, but has a different twist. Jon Snow is actually the son of Brandon and Ashara that Ned agreed to raise on his own. This theory is a little complicated and deserves its own video, so here's a summary that probably doesn't do it justice. Ashara and Brandon become lovers at the tourney at Harrenhal, and Ashara becomes pregnant with his child. Again, possibly at King's Landing during his come out and die Rhaegar explosion and being in prison. And then that weird prison sex happens. After the Tower of Joy, Ned collects Lyanna and Rhaegar's child that isn't Jon and heads to Starfall. There he swaps babies, taking Brandon and Ashara's child, who is named Jon, and giving Ashara slash the Danes, Lyanna, and Rhaegar's child, who might look Targaryen and Ned couldn't reasonably hide at Winterfell. In return for protecting Jon, Ashara agreed to watch over Lyanna's kid, who was, wait for it, actually Daenerys Targaryen. Rhaella didn't actually give birth to Daenerys, but had a stillbirth and died during the birthing. Willem Derry then took Viserys out of Dragonstone and to Dorne after being contacted by the Danes, letting Viserys know what is going on and that he must pretend Daenerys is his sister. This theory is very overcomplicated, and it brings up a lot of questions. The first usually being, Daenerys Targaryen is Lyanna and Rhaegar's child? What? Well, those that subscribe to this theory point out a few things in favor of this. First, that Daenerys remembers a lemon tree while growing up, which she believes was in Braavos. There are no lemon trees in Braavos that we know of, and the climate is not a great environment for them. However, we're constantly reminded Dorne has lots of lemons. So was Daenerys raised in Dorne for a time by the Danes? Possibly. Though the whole no lemon trees in Braavos theory is still being debated. Second, that before Ned's death, he seems fixated on his promises to Lyanna and that he broke them. If Daenerys is the child he swore to protect, he might fear that in dying, he can't protect her anymore. He worries Daenerys will be assassinated by the crown. This theory might also explain Viserys' hate for Daenerys, besides he's just a bitter, crazy guy. Being Rhaegar's child, he knows she would be in line before Viserys. Well, maybe. Male presidents makes that iffy in my opinion, and they'd likely still go for Viserys over Daenerys. But Viserys might still fear that possibility. So he keeps her around for furthering his claim, never tells her the truth about not really being his sister, and uses her to get what he wants. Believers of this theory further state that Daenerys' vision of the blue flower at the wall was a message to go to the wall and fight the bigger war. The throne isn't what she should be focusing on, and the vision wasn't a hint of R plus L equals J. Another question usually asked about this theory is, why would Ashara give her son to Ned? The best reason I've been given is for inheritance issues. Some believe that being the son of Ashara and Brandon meant there was a potential for him to take over as Lord of Starfall, or Lord of Winterfell one day. Ned taking Jon and raising him as his own helps the Danes avoid a succession issue, and Ned avoid one as well at Winterfell. 
and it would help Ned avoid trouble with the Tullys, who may fear a legitimized John would become the Lord of Winterfell, not Catelyn's children by Ned. Which might explain why the Danes appear to like Ned so much, despite killing Arthur Dane. He agreed to raise Ashara and Brandon's kid, solving their inheritance problem, and took good care of her child. In honor of his sacrifice on his own honor, they nicknamed their Lord of Starfall after him, Edric Ned Dane. If that was even really the real reason why they call him Ned, Ned is still a perfectly normal nickname for Edric, so it doesn't have to be in honor of Ned or anyone. They could have also told Ned Dane that Jon Snow is actually Willa's kid to further draw off suspicion. There's a lot of reasons against this whole theory, mostly that there are a lot of hints that Jon is the son of Lyanna and they are practically screaming at us at this point. Also, it's hard to imagine Ned denying Jon his rightful lordship over Winterfell, even if the Tullys threw a hissy fit. Taking your nephew's place as Lord of Winterfell seems very selfish and not very Ned-like. If the Brandon Ashara were lovers theory turns out to be true, I like the cleaner version of Ashara killing herself over losing her love and her brother. But what do you think? What are your opinions of R plus L equals D? In part three, we'll talk about Ashara, Ned, Lyanna, and then Jin. Thank you for watching, thumbs up are greatly appreciated. After part three, I'll release the video as one long video.